All righty, y'all. Here we go. All right. Just turning on the chat. You can chat with everyone. Hey, y'all. Good to see everyone here. Let us know where you're coming in from in the chat. If you're just joining, I think everyone can go and post in the chat. There we go. I just want to know where Jordan is because, holy cow, it's got to be a heck of a lot warmer there than it is in Chicago right now. <laughs> He's on mute. Yeah, all good. I'm in Scottsdale. Um, so. All right. We got people from Lagos, Denver, NYC, Egypt. Wow. We got people from everywhere. We got SF, Hitchin. Nice. Good to see everyone loading up here. Over 200 people joining so far. We'll get this show on the road here in the next minute here. Just let everyone pile in. I uh, got my buddy Shiv from ConvertKit here. Shiv, where are you at right now? In lovely Chicago, Illinois. Well, technically, if you're from Chicago, you'll probably be mad at me because I'm in the suburbs right now in Schaumburg, Illinois. Um, there we go. But uh, we're known for like the 16th biggest mall in America. So that's our claim to fame in beautiful Schaumburg, Legoland and Woodfield Mall. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, I'm calling in from Dubai, uh, but... Uh, from Toronto, Canada, and I see a lot of fellow Canadians here. Shout out Vancouver. We got Sudbury. You're in Dubai. Beautiful. You got to like recreate the Fast and Furious seven shot. You got to like get a car and then just go straight through the Burj and like you know land it like Vin Diesel does. Exactly, man. Just go for it. All right. Well, uh, let's get this show on the road. Um, so we're gonna kick this thing off, and uh, let's do this thing. Love it. All right, so here we go, y'all. Well, uh, welcome to this workshop. I uh, appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy Wednesday, I believe, or no, maybe Tuesdays. It's Wednesday here in Dubai uh, to join this. Uh, really great to connect with everyone in the community. Really excited to uh, dive into it. Um, have a lot of respect for uh, Shiv and the awesome work he's doing with my buddy Nathan, the founder of ConvertKit. And we wanted to dive in a little bit on how to go and scale a profitable email newsletter. Um, and we're both going to kind of give you a little bit of the inside baseball in terms of um, how to scale a newsletter, how to drive people from your audience to a newsletter, then to profits. And I'm going to show you some of the ways I use ConvertKit and build up my newsletter. Shiv is going to dive into some of the cool aspects uh, that you know he's been kind of leveraging these days to scale things. And so let's kick this thing off. So most of you guys know about me, but you know, for those that don't, I'm the founder of Founder OS, as well as Herb, a community of 14 million people, um, operate my portfolio of internet businesses at an 80% profit margin, sold my first company for eight figures, trained over 2000 software engineers, got them jobs at companies like Meta, Facebook, uh, Google, Shopify, um, and the founder of four profitable companies since then, um, existing founder West has over 7 million a year, uh, herb doing over 13 million this year and, uh, operate as a team of remote contractors across both, both businesses. Um, so yeah, we're here to really show you kind of how to leverage the newsletter side of things, which I don't think gets talked enough about, you know, online. Um, a lot of people kind of overlook it. Uh, they talk a lot about growing an audience and they talk about scaling a product. Uh, but the newsletter side of things I see is kind of the conduit between your audience and profits with your product. And so we wanted to just to dedicate this workshop solely uh, to that side of things. So um, at the end of this, I have a free gift I want to give everyone here um, to help all of you. I actually got a few little nuggets as we go throughout this. So Stay tuned. The goal is to give you guys an enormous amount of value uh, for joining us here today because you know your time means a lot to us and we're eternally grateful. Um, but I'm going to let uh, Shiv introduce himself because uh, he's a legend and uh, you know got to pass it off. Right on, right on. Uh, I'll keep the I'll keep the intro short and sweet. Um, out here at ConvertKit, I'm the creator, educator. Um, I've been in the email game. The stuff that you guys probably care about. I've been in the email game for about ten years here. Um, teaching, you know, over 10,000, 20,000 different small businesses, um, just how to scale up and, and how to really leverage automation and email in an effective way. 
Um, and if you want to get to know me a little better, if you give a shout out to Marvel Green or the Chicago Bears in the chat, you'll probably get my attention pretty quick. Um, but I, I love I love talking email. So throw my question, throw your questions at me. Um, here to help. There we go. All right. Well, let's get into it. So as many of you may know, right, a newsletter is really key because it's going to help you own your audience. Uh, you know, the truth is that you don't own Meta, you don't own Instagram, you don't own, you know, Google X or LinkedIn. And at any moment, those platforms could just rug pull you. Um, but the thing that they can't take from you is your audience that you own in your newsletter, right? So it protects you from algorithm changes. It makes your business anti-fragile, more formidable and sustainable long-term. And it gives you really control over your destiny because when you go and you have a newsletter and you own that audience, you can push notifications to those people, emails, updates, products, whenever you want. You don't need to rely on an algorithm just posting to 10% of your followers on any given post. And so not only that, but your newsletter is going to also convert 120% better than any other platform for your paid products. So whether you're selling a course, digital products, software, a uh, mastermind, you know, paid anything, uh, you know, your newsletter is really, um, yeah, this like sacred community you're building um, that's with you for the long term. And as platforms change, as algorithms change, your newsletter is this formidable audience that you own um, that ain't going anywhere. So. We're going to be covering today a little bit on how to create a high converting sign up page. I'm going to give you the inside baseball on how I've created mine, uh, the way I've structured it, the things going on there that is helping it convert at around 50 to 60%. Um, I'm going to show you how to create a desirable lead magnet, ways to get people hooked in your newsletters. And then uh, Shiv is going to go over some proven methods to consistently kind of grow your audience and revenue at the same time. So, um, we got over 300 people here. I'm stoked for all of you um, who are able to join. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's dive into it. Um, so one thing I really suggest everyone does here um, is whether probably right now is what I would suggest because we're about to get into a lot of stuff that would be useful if you already are a member, but at the very least do it by the end of this, which is you're going to want to go and sign up for a convert kit. Um, ConvertKit is the platform that I use for all the demos I'm about to show you. Um, and it's really a simple decision here. Um, you know, there's a lot of newsletter platforms out there that some of you may have heard of. I've gone and been on a couple of them, but inevitably came to ConvertKit, uh, because it's the most robust platform. My favorite creators like James Clear, Tim Ferriss, Ryan Holiday, they all use ConvertKit. And a lot of the times in my career, I've just, you know, been able to get to where I've gotten just by standing on the shoulders of giants. And so trusting the signal of folks like that, as well as, you know, the robust automations that exist in ConvertKit, which I'm going to show you some of the cool automations that I have set up, it becomes a no brainer that as you scale, you want to go and have a newsletter that can scale with you and that can essentially take the robust automation infrastructure, you probably want to put in place things like welcome sequences, uh, segmentation, personalization, and be able to funnel people to the right product, uh, based on what you're learning about them. And ConvertKit does all that and can take you from, you know, getting started with one or two subscribers all the way to a million plus and has kind of all of the tools and the intricacies that I think all of you should be looking for in a newsletter provider. Um, and, uh, not to mention, you know, great team, uh, good people and are there for you um, if you ever need any support. So I just put the link there uh, for ConvertKit in the chat. Um, go sign up for that. And I'm going to go and show you guys how I'm using the platform right now. Um, and then I'm going to uh, let Shiv take some stuff away. So here we go. First things first, y'all. Um, you know, you've may, maybe you've kind of followed me on a platform like X. And, you know, you see my content there, but one thing, you know, that should be very apparent is that I make a real effort to drive people to my newsletter, right? So here you can see the link there to my newsletter on X, you know, you can also see it that at the end of a given thread, I'm plugging my newsletter here. So I'm constantly making an effort to essentially drive people from my audience to my newsletter. The same thing on LinkedIn, right? On LinkedIn, 
you can go and you don't have to scroll too far to see that I'm almost immediately plugging my newsletter in my featured section. And I'm also driving people to it at the end of my posts. And so the 59 million monthly impressions I'm driving on LinkedIn and the 113,000 followers I'm driving every single month are all being pushed to my newsletter. The same thing on YouTube. When you go to my channel here, you know, inside, oh, there we go. Inside, you know, of the description there, pushing people to the newsletter and the same thing on Instagram. So, you know, the newsletter is really the main link that I am driving people to across all of these platforms. And so sometimes it kind of, it sneaks in there sort of like silently and people don't really notice it and they don't notice it on other creators. Again, like James Clear or Tim Ferriss or Ryan Holiday, you know, your favorite creators are likely using ConvertKit and they're, they have their newsletter link somewhere generally quite prominent across their social so that they're driving that audience to their own audience. Now, the key method that people then use to drive then that social audience to the owned audience inside of the newsletter is leveraging a high converting landing page. So this is an example here of mine. This is founderos.com slash newsletter. I'll share this in the chat because I think it's a cool resource to check out um, to see kind of how I've structured my newsletter. Um, so here you can see really catchy headline, right? The only newsletter you need to grow your personal brand. Then in the sub copy, giving some people, you know, a little bit more of what they can expect, right? Every Saturday, sharing three practical growth tips you won't find online and then encouraging people to enter their email. Now, some tips that a lot of people miss on these kind of pages is that I do not have any nav bar up here. Thereby, I'm kind of squeezing people in that the only action they can take on this page is to sign up and put in their email and join the newsletter. I also, as you can see, have a preview of the newsletter here and then some social proof at the bottom showing really people why, you know, it's an obvious choice to sign up. And this page converts at around 50%. So pretty solid. And the team's constantly making new improvements to it to keep on making it better and better and better. So this is kind of how to set up a high converting landing page in ConvertKit. I mean, we're going to get to some of this today in the lesson, but just wanted to give you a quick preview. Now, you know, we touched on ConvertKit, right? This is the platform I use to grow my audience, send all my emails. This is how I earn, um, you know, roughly $4 million a year is all through the newsletter side of things. Um, and it's really like how I'm automating my marketing, driving revenue, building an audience. You know, I have a book coming out mid-year. It'll be responsible for probably 70% of those book sales. Um, you know, really anything I do, whether it's events, meetups, you know, anything at all, ConvertKit's driving that through my newsletter. So here you can see, you know, in a given month from the tactics I just showed you across social, driving around 15,000 subscribers per month. And so the cool thing is in ConvertKit, you can see robust dashboards, analytics, all your insights, see how you're scaling and, you know, able to kind of go and organize all your social links there as well as go and they have a handy thing called their creator network. So think of a creator network as essentially a community of fellow newsletter, you know, owners and creators um, that are all helping one another cross pollinate their communities. And so up until, you know, 2022, you know, you went and built a newsletter community and it was almost like your own little island you were building. You owned that island. You were the, you know, king or queen of that castle and that was your spot. And there were all these different islands around the globe, but none of them were able to interact much. You know, the creator network is almost like this like cruise liner that allows all these people to now sync up and create this network where you know, the people and the subscribers that you're building on your island are actually able to travel amongst one another now. So as you can see here, in just the last few months, I've driven over 5,000 subscribers from a host of over 40 different creators, all recommending their communities and their subscribers to join my newsletter. 
So it's a great way of getting your brand out there more to communities and to people that probably otherwise would never hear about you. So really cool feature that only exists inside a convert kit was really launched early last year um, and still early in a good way. So great time to get on board this sort of new kind of cutting edge functionality for newsletters uh, and be able to grow a newsletter, not only from your own audience, um, but from fellow creators as well. And I'm sure Shiv will dive into that a little bit deeper. Now, you know, inside a convert kit goes without saying, but pretty convenient platform for just kind of like going and structuring all your newsletters, super easy to use. You just simply, you know, upload everything in here. Some stuff I just wanted to point out to you guys was that once you've gone and built out your newsletter, right? And you've kind of written it. I push mine every Wednesday and Saturday. Twice a week for me is a nice cadence that I can keep up with. And that also is great for me to kind of be able to continue to nurture my audience. And I'm sure a lot of you here are part of it. So thanks for being part of the Founder Us newsletter. At the end of it, as you may have seen, right? I have different CTAs that are ways that I can go and drive people, again, from now my own audience to moving them further down the funnel. And so at the end of my newsletter, I always include four different CTAs. One is driving people to founder OS. If people are interested in growing their personal brand, growing faster through organic content, I encourage them to go and check it out. The second is I can promote my YouTube channel there so I can cross pollinate now my newsletter community over to my YouTube, which has allowed me to grow a YouTube channel in under a year to close to 50, 56,000 subscribers over there. Number three here is I'm able to then also go and mention that, hey, we got some slots open you know, through to September, 2024 and have brands go and advertise inside the newsletter if they're interested. And then lastly, again, able to kind of cross pollinate other platforms like X and LinkedIn um, which, you know, this has been a large contributor to me becoming the fastest growing LinkedIn creator in the world, growing at over 112,000 followers per month. So super easy platform now in terms of like the more sophisticated ways I'm using my newsletter to drive Founder OS to the heights it's gotten to in just the last couple of years. You're able to go and actually engineer a lot of different automations inside of ConvertKit. Now, some of these are pretty sophisticated, so I won't get into those, but there's some pretty cool ones. Like when someone goes and signs up for a given course from you, you can automate sending them a testimonial sequence so that when someone goes and purchases a product, you're able to go and automatically go and send them a request to give you a testimonial in a given time or say a week or 10 days later. You know, similarly, you know, you can go and have different mini courses that you build inside of, you know, ConvertKit so that when someone goes and signs up for your newsletter, they're gone and given a five day mini course where over five days, they get five different lessons that teach them a certain thing. So you can use that mini course as a great lead magnet to get more subscribers um, and have that all automated uh, within ConvertKit. So those are some cool automations. There's a lot more. I'm sure we'll get into a bunch of this. Um, for many of you, I'm sure that you are interested in setting up at the very least an automation so that when someone joins your newsletter, they're automatically getting say a three, four, five day nurture sequence so that over the first five days of joining, you're sort of giving them more information on what you're all about, um, how you can help them and essentially why they should be part of your community. I like to call this like an indoctrination sequence because you're essentially getting people indoctrinated to the movement that you're creating within your newsletter. So to just provide one nugget here, we've got a bunch more coming. I prepared a CK convert kit welcome sequence prompt for all of you um, leveraging chat GBT. And so you can go and take this prompt um, and insert more details on your newsletter and provide a bit of context in order to go and help you draft a V1 of your own sort of welcome sequence over three, four, five days. And so, yeah, my hope is that you find this prompt super useful um, and that you're able to use it to quickly get your welcome series inside a convert kit all launched and ready to go, thereby, you know, warming up your subscribers when they join and helping you build a really vibrant audience. So I'm going to go, I'm going to share that in the chat here.
There you go. And we are going to switch things over back to the presentation here and keep ripping. So let's get into some proven methods now to helping you kind of grow your audience and revenue at the same time. Uh, we're going to keep, keep grooving here. So something that we're really big at, I know I'm big on this on my side, Nathan and folks like Shiv are really big at the convert kit side, which is why we all jive is really big on setting up founder flywheels, right? Going and building a flywheel where people join your newsletter, they get kind of sucked into the content you're creating there. They learn more about the universe you're creating, right? Your sort of languaging, the community you're building, the products that you have. Um, they tell their friends, they tell other creators that now refer you. And this thing just helps kind of propel this, you know, flywheel, right? Which is just like a self-perpetuating machine. And so we have new subscribers joining. We have the creator network, like I showed you, propelling this audience even further. We have the welcome email sequence, helping indoctrinate people to the movement that we're creating. We're then able to go and drive profits through things like products, paid newsletters, recommendations, paid communities, whatever it is that you're selling. And all of those profits were then able to dump back into things like organic content, audience growth, a better product, and just kind of further growing the revenue flywheel. Um, is there anything you want to expand maybe on sh this, Shiv? Just the sense that like when the, the basis of a flywheel, right, is just the sense of every single time this rotation happens, you're going to get more and more results. It's only going to build upon itself. So kind of what Matt was saying, as you're gaining more subscribers through both, you know, the creator network and some of the stuff that, that you're giving out for free with, with the landing pages you're, you're throwing out there, um, when you come back to this flywheel that we're you know, focusing on today and we start to really get that audience to get value from us and they start to trust us. And then we're monetizing that, that grouping of people, that last step there that says partner network, we can take that money and reinvest it back into ways to only fuel our growth more and more. So every time this turns, we're ideally getting more subscribers and making more money, thus making it easier for us once we get through say like five, 10 rotations of this thing. Yeah. I love that. Um, awesome. So we went through, um, a little bit on kind of creating a high converting signup page. Um, again, the goal here y'all is to essentially be taking that rented audience that you're building, right? So whether you're just on one to two platforms, say like X and LinkedIn, or you're across all platforms, you know, I showed you guys how I'm plugging my newsletter link, which leads to my ConvertKit newsletter on all of my platforms is really the most prominent link. If there was one thing I could send any follower to, it would be my newsletter. And the reason why you want to send people to a newsletter over a product is that when you send someone to a product, let's just say the product was $100, maybe your conversion rate there is like 3%, 2% on cold traffic, if you're lucky. And so thereby, you're taking all that interest and that attention you have. And if you send them directly to a product page, you're missing out on like those 97% of people that won't convert that would convert to something if it was just lower friction. And so the cool thing is that when you got a convert kit newsletter going, the friction is nearly eliminated, right? Because you're simply just asking someone to join something for free to get free value, free content, join a free community essentially. And that's where I showed you, like we're getting over 50% conversion rates on those landing pages, which then you can just imagine the amount that compounds over time. So we're growing our audience at record numbers, and then you can nurture people within that newsletter through things like the welcome sequence, weekly newsletters, different automations you can set up based on different actions people take within it, different things that they click, you can automate what would happen next. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do there to then send people, not just any product, down the line, but you can actually personalize and make sure that you send them to the right product for them. So if someone indicates that they're into audience growth, I may send them to something which is going to be different than someone that says that they're looking to remove themselves from operations and hire a chief of staff. I'm going to send them to a different resource that's personalized for them. So it gives you a whole robust web of personalization that simply sending someone direct to a product page from social will not give you. Shiv, you want to expand on that at all? 
I was just going to say the cool thing about that is um, when it comes to data, right? Like when it comes to like the name of the game that, that we're talking about here is sending that right message at the right time to the right person and using as much information we can to really drive value for each individual challenge that people are seeing. And so when we're talking about using data to do that, um, I, I kind of bucket it into two different places in, in my head. There's data that people are uh, literally telling us, right? We have our, our forms out here. Obviously, when you're earlier in the journey, let's just ask email. Let's not get too far into asking them a ton of questions. But as people are, are further along in our journey, we probably have a little bit more leeway to ask them a little bit more questions. Hey, what's your biggest challenge? And we can use that information to really directly talk to those people. But then there's also data that people don't even tell us. We can just assume. And, and that's what Matt's talking about, where, hey, they're clicking this link in the newsletter right? They're clicking this link. We have five blog articles over the course of, uh, you know, this, the sequence that we're sending out. And they specifically clicked on this link where people are saying, Hey, I just don't know how to, uh, find, you know, my, my people I'm trying to, uh, trying to find new leads. And I, I'm really struggling on how I should show up on YouTube say, right. And so people keep clicking on these blog articles about YouTube. Well, Hey, maybe their biggest challenge is how to leverage and optimize YouTube then. And you know that because they clicked on that link and let's get them down in a specific sequence that solves that challenge. Love that. So, you know, we talked a lot about the sign up page, right. But, you know, making that well optimized, right. is really going to increase the likelihood of people joining your list. It's going to enhance your brand perception because oftentimes you know, really that may be the first time that people are seeing your brand, right? For me, that landing page I showed you, right? The founder OS newsletter page, you know, most people are just seeing Matt Gray across all these platforms. And then when they hit that page, it's their first impression of founder OS. So you want to take some time really to make it something that feels good for you. Um, and ideally, like we'll show you here, also have a lead magnet that you set up to increase conversions as much as possible. So you know, making that irresistible, really thinking about why should someone sign up for this newsletter, right? You want to differentiate yourself, use action words. Again, I provided my example here and I'll provide it again in the chat so you can check out Founder OS is there. Um, Shiv, out of curiosity, any cool ones you've seen that you really thought would be worthwhile to point out? Man, I, I just like, I really enjoy, uh, let, let me answer the opposite. I think sure. I, what I hate, what I see is when people go like really long drawn out. I think it's why I respect yeah. the landing page that you just showed. Um, because you had to just have to imagine like from a journey from somebody who's never heard of you before to your most loyal customer, everything in between. These people are so early on the journey. We need to be very short, sweet to the point as to what the value is that they're getting from coming here. I see people make the mistake of like, hey, this this freebie essentially is, is your newsletter here. Some people will do like a guide of some sorts or a mini course and they get so excited by their content that they say, okay, let me write paragraphs and paragraphs, right? And just go on and on about, why people should should do this. Let me try to sell, sell them on it. People aren't reading, right? People aren't reading that when they're so early on in your journey. Somebody might've seen one of my reels, right? And gone to the link in my bio or maybe checked out one of my short YouTube videos gone there. It's not like we have a lot of trust built up yet. So um, you got to keep those landing pages fairly short, sweet when we're talking copy on there. Yeah, you can see here an example too with Tim, uh, Tim Ferriss, who's also on ConvertKit. You know, just super simple, basically takes over the whole page. Like I said, no, no area to scroll anywhere. It's kind of just, you know, squeeze page. He's got his lead magnet here, 17 questions that changed my life. And to get that, you just enter in your email address and then you unlock it. So super simple. Um, and another example of a way to kind of very simply, very easily, like Shiv saying, you don't need to crowd the page. Don't overload it. Keep it just simple to the point and just get those emails. Um, Another like really, the... I was just gonna say like a way to to really reduce the friction of like explaining what the lead magnet is is I was just mentioning you know you leveraging some of the the resources that you're gonna be either sending in your newsletter or if again you have a freebie of some sorts um, like pairing that off with some of the content you're putting out on some of these more virality based platforms if you have a podcast if you have if you're posting a lot of reels if you're a youtuber um you drive so much value through that 
five minute YouTube video that you just uh, created and say that YouTube video, just as an example, um, I've got a business where I teach photographers, videographers how to grow their business. So one, one of the things that I talk about is like your listing page um, on weddings, you know, uh, websites like the wedding wire, you know, or things like that. Right. So I really talk through that. And the whole five minute video is all about like, how should you show up on the wedding wire? If you're a, a wedding videographer, so when I go to the lead magnet and I just have this page that says, I talk about it in the video itself. Hey, if you want to get these top five tips in, in a guide, go to my link in bio. And in the link in bio, I don't need to put that full description selling people on why this is. I've already talked about what that is in my video. It kind of reduces the friction I need to really put on the page. Um, so there's just so many good ways that, that you can really get people to quickly get to the what you want, which is uh, submit their email address. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. And so then, yeah, when you're thinking about building these two, getting the imagery and design, right? Like we're both saying, right? Keep it minimalist. You're just trying to get people to sign up. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple. Simplicity really wins from there. You know, making sure that you have social proof. I talk a lot about how, you know, people don't buy what you sell. They buy what others want to buy. And then the same thing goes with your newsletter, right? You want to make sure that you have overwhelming social proof that yours is amazing, right? So getting some quotes from some top folks in your space to help just build the level of notoriety and respect that people would have so that beyond the lead magnet, the simplicity, the copy, the headline, the preview, the quotes, it's just, you know, a no brainer uh, for people to join. Um, and they are convinced that it's beyond worthwhile. Cool. And so from there, you know, a call to action, just making it simple, join now, try it out, start learning, get access, you know, again, don't overthink it. I see a lot of people, you know, when they get going with a newsletter, what oftentimes, again, the first question is why a newsletter? And I think we've covered that, right? Basically you want to own your audience. It's a no brainer there. The second thing then is, well, what should I use to do it? And we've gone over that convert kit is the obvious option there. And we've gone over why that's the case. And then from there it becomes, okay, well, what do I talk about in it? And depending on where you're at in your own journey, right? It's going to look different for you. If you're getting started, I would encourage you not to overthink it, right? The cool thing about your newsletter versus like writing on X or on LinkedIn is, is it's really just people just trying to get to know you and what you're about. And so you can just be writing weekly about your weekly curiosities, you know, what wins you're having, what things you're studying, what books you're reading. It can be about just people want to get to know you, those followers inside your newsletter those are like your loyal raving fans. And so they genuinely want to get the, to know the more vulnerable, you know, intimate side of you, right? And not just the broad side of, you know, a more social platform. And so don't be afraid just to, you know, give them in the inner scoop, the inner baseball of like what you're up to. Um, yeah, in terms of, you know, newsletters that you're following, Shiv, like, is there any kind of that stand out as yeah. like doing a great job on the content side? I was, I was going to say like one of the flywheels that Nathan implements, um, oftentimes and I, I love, cause I'm the kind of guy who's like, shoot, it's Monday. I got writer's block. Can't think of what I'm going to write for my Wednesday newsletter sometimes. Right. And so one way you can approach that is you have step one of people coming in through different sources, right. Uh, for new subscribers. Hey, when people come in as a new subscriber and we're going to cover you know, sending out welcome emails and automated emails to them. But we're going to get some kind of welcome sequence that like Matt was saying, and in that welcome sequence, somewhere in there, let's get that call to action B to be, hey, why don't you respond to this email and tell me what's your biggest challenge? What, what are you struggling with right now? Let's get some engagement from the audience, right? It's not only good for your email deliverability and, and good for um, so many reasons on a technical level, but obviously it's great to hear directly from your audience to get a good sense of what they want to hear about. And so when we collect all those and I throw those in kind of like a folder in Gmail, they all just kind of collect in there. And then I've got that writer's block on Monday. I just open up that folder and I say, Hey, what a great question this person asked. Let me give them a thoughtful response, but let me let that inspire my next newsletter. And I write that out. And then secondly, let me let that inspire the content that I make on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, that eventually again, funnels back over to the newsletter where I say, Hey, if you loved what I just talked about, double click onto that, uh, onto that link in my bio, because my next newsletter issue is going to cover everything about this. Um, and it just, again, it's another flywheel that the more people that come through there, the more questions I get, the more questions I get, the more ideas I have to never have writer's block on that Monday. Yeah. 
just to expand on that a bit, you know, my strategy oftentimes with newsletters, this is mine coming out on Saturday. Um, you know, I wrote this on Monday morning after a weekend of relaxing beyond in nature, had some notes on my phone in terms of some things I wanted to talk about. I opened up Hemingway. I had the notes on my Apple notes. My goal is always to make the readability about a grade three or four level. So it's simple and easy to read. I then load it up in here and Hemingway is nice just because I have no distractions. It's just so simple like this. When you put it into writing mode, there's really no, nothing but you in the writing. And then I load this up. I work through it, aim to add as much value as possible, add loom videos, add documents, systems, templates, as much as I can to make it just as rich and easy as possible for po people to understand the given topic I'm talking about. And then from there, I then load this into ConvertKit hook it all up with the right CTAs, GIFs, images, everything else I need so that it's picture perfect for the time I want to publish. Um, so Hemingway is a cool editor that you can check out for, you know, when you actually just want to write and be able to focus. Um, and then I like to oftentimes, once I'm done my writing sessions inside of here, transport things over. The cool thing is you can kind of check for all different things like passive voice, complex sentences, hard sentences to read. Um, and really just simplify your writing as much as possible so that, you know, it's enjoyable for folks to check out. Um, I think another thing just to kind of, for those just trying to do a little more newsletter research, um, there's a couple of kinds of newsletters you can go and create, right? One is sort of a curated newsletter. Um, I'm sharing um, James Clear's 321 there in the chat, you know, a really good, easy roundup. For those of you that are kind of scared to go and start really expressing yourself a bunch in a newsletter and are looking to more share resources that you love. I think three, two, one is a great, uh, inspo there. Some of you are in maybe odd niches and sort of terrified of like, Oh, am I too niche? Well, you know, Ryan holiday, you know, is now, you know, over the last decade become known for stoicism, you know, and it doesn't matter what niche you're in. Uh, you know, you can find a community online of people that are interested in it. And I think the Daily Stoic is a great example of that. Another ConvertKit newsletter. And now they have over 700,000 people um, that are part of this amazing community all around reading quotes from folks like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and so on. And then one of my favorite newsletters out there, you know, Harry Dry, right? All around sort of marketing examples, sharing inspiration, helping you level up. This is one of my favorite newsletters online, read it every week, highly recommend it. So, you know, whether you're in a certain business niche, whether you have some weird, you know, obsession that you're into like Ryan holiday on stoicism, um, or you're just looking to share curated resources that you love similar to James clear. Um, you know, no matter what your sort of interests lie, um, it's a no brainer to get a newsletter going to at least start cultivating an audience early on. You know, when I got started with founder OS, I really had no idea uh, what it was going to be. Um, I just got creating a newsletter early on um, and figured, you know, I can't lose. Like, you know, might as well just get started, give it a shot. Um, and sure enough, I started something called the Soulful Entrepreneur actually to start with. Um, I didn't know what I was going to create with it and started scaling it up from zero subscribers to 10 to 20 to 50. And eventually rebranded the Soulful Entrepreneur to Founder OS ended up launching a program, a high level community and have scaled things since there. And so, you know, what started as just a passion project is what's transformed now into founder OS. And so many of you maybe are sitting on the fence, not sure when to start. And this is your friendly message to just get started wherever you are. So let's keep grooving here. I've got to find uh, where I put this presentation here. One second. <laughs> While you're finding that, I, I just like it. This reminds yeah. me of a conversation I had um, last year. We had this conference at ConvertKit called Crafting Commerce. Um, Amy Porterfield, if you are familiar with her, she was there, um, was talking to her backstage and was just asking her, like, if you had to start over, like if you had to start from scratch, um, what, what would you be focusing on? And, and she said, email, she said, that's the one medium that you can do from day zero. Like you need to be focusing in on starting that first newsletter, um, getting a landing pitch together and driving subscribers there. Um, there's no really a bad time to, to really get that owned audience started. Exactly. Um, so on the lead magnet side, I know a lot of people then get stuck there. They're not sure, you know, what's that maybe free giveaway they want to give people to entice them to join their newsletter. And so the cool thing about lead magnets is that when they're done right, you know, they can increase your leads 
by over 50%, right? Just making it more of a no brainer for people to go from your rented audience to your owned audience. And so when you're crafting it, right, you want to really think about things that are desirable. You know, when you look at your audience, what is something that would really blow their minds for you to give away for free that they will be that much more likely to join your newsletter um, to get that free resource. And so I wanted to share a couple um, of my favorites that I've seen out there over the last little bit, um, just to bubble up some inspiration for y'all. Um, so here we go. There we go. So I showed you Tim Ferriss's website, um, but this is Tim Ferriss's lead magnet. So essentially he's going and showing people the 17 questions that changed his life. You can see nice design, clean branding. You know, Tim's pretty obsessed with quality and this newsletter lead magnet shows it. And so you get to know a little bit about him. It kind of gives you a little bit of his backstory and why this lead magnet, what he's all about, kind of tells you a little bit of like the ethos of his brand, right? That he's kind of scratching his own itch and this kind of like human guinea pig. Um, and then gets into different questions um, that would be useful because that's the promise of this lead magnet. Uh, you know, similarly, I love this uh, website called Creator Hooks. Um, it's all around hooks for YouTube videos. And they just have a very simple lead magnet on 10 viral video elements, right? So the cool thing about these is you look at them is like, they don't need to be that beautiful, right? If you just have some good information, you put some stuff together that you know would be really valuable for your audience and you, you know, get it out there. It's more about the content being amazing. It's less about... It needs to look amazing. And the cool thing as well is like in ConvertKit, it's really easy to update your lead magnet over time. So you can launch a different one every couple months. You don't need to worry about, you know, being perfect. It's like anything. You can just iterate on it and kind of keep experimenting. Um, you know, last one here that I thought was pretty solid um, is, uh, you know, even promosi has got his, um, you know, he's got, he's got his roadmaps. I've got like a hundred K checklist on my side that I give people helping them with the checklist that they need to set up to get to hundred K per month. And so, yeah, lots of different ways you can go and craft these. Um, you know, I think it's about knowing your audience, knowing what will entice them um, and kind of just being a bit creative. Do you have anything reminds, you'd add there? It just reminds me of this uh, creator that I ran into. Um, he, he like pretty meta, but teaches uh, newsletter creators how to, how to grow. And um, he had this lead magnet where he just took an email um, and just like straight up like a teacher, red pen, uh, hey, cross out this, it was like wrote in what he would do. It it didn't look aesthetically pleasing, but just to Matt's point, it it provided so much value in this in this lead magnet. Scanned it, threw it up, um, cleaned it up a little bit, um, and, and made it a guide. And it just like really reinforces this idea that like um it you don't overthink it, like providing value and providing good information above all rather than thinking about how can you design the perfect element. I don't have the biggest eye for you put me in front of Canva. I'm not going to give you like the most beautiful thing in the world comparatively to, to a graphic designer, but I promise you that I can bring, bring you some value and that's going to be good enough to get some good subscribers. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, as we kind of like, you know, wrap up the lead magnet area, right. For those of you who just need that added bit of inspiration, whether it's, you know, giveaways, free tools, how to guides, idea generators, chat GBT prompts, checklists, templates, webinars, like the list goes on, right? There's an abundance of ways that you can go and provide free value to your audience. And so I don't think there's any perfect way. I think the best way is just the way that, you know, feels obvious to you and that you can get moving on right away um, so that you can set up the newsletter, get it going, get this hooked up um, and be well on your way. Um, so really, I think, uh, the lesson here is overthinking is the enemy and just try to pick something, run with it um, and get going. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. Um, you know, it's good just to get started. And so from here, I want to uh, hand it off to Shiv to kind of maybe talk a little bit more about some of the inside baseball um, on the convert kit side. Um, I think we've covered a lot of sort of again, kind of going from audience to owned audience to then helping you with setting up the landing pages, a little bit of the overview of how I'm using it all the way from, you know, how I'm hooking up my newsletter on the social platforms all the way through to some of the automations that I've gotten set up. I'm going to hand it off to Shiv to uh, just kind of give us a little more details um, on the platform and cool ways to use it. Right on. Yeah. Let me grab the, the screen here and I'll, I'll just slide into ConvertKit. 
Um, so when we're getting to convert key here, um, there's a couple different places, just, just to show y'all like, um, little tour of, of where to go here. Um, two different places that we're, we're looking at to actually shoot out emails here. Um, that first one is going to be in the broadcast section. That's going to be really your newsletter versus automate is where you're going to really have that kind of like drip sequence where we're saying, Hey, let, that's where we can shoot out those welcome sequences. That's where we can really go through and, and get some of the, um, different pathways that we track for people. Let's head over to, to broadcast here really quick. So when I go to broadcast, um, what, what I'm looking at here is, uh, let me just go to a new broadcast. When I, when I'm thinking about like the different templates that, that you're going to select, um, that's, that's really the starting place here where, where we're going to pick here. And actually, let me go back here. Let me actually just get you guys to show like the full email template library that, that we got here. Um, you can actually go to this template library and we have like some creators that have some really cool templates they've created. Um, some are free. There's a marketplace too, where you can list your own templates and, and start to sell those as well. Um, but really, really cool stuff here. I'm curious for, for you, Matt, like when you're thinking through the structure of your newsletter, like what leads you to, to pick a certain structure um, for, for Founder at OS? Yeah, good question. So truth is, like most things in business and creativity, it's really a process of refinement, right? So I'm not, uh, my, my structure has changed like over the last 18 months, right? It started very simply with kind of a story, then a system. Now I have a little bit of a story, some systems, uh, my YouTube's plugged in there, so on and so forth. And so I'm constantly adapting it and changing it. I'd say one principle that's important to me is that, you know, I imagine someone opening the newsletter on a Saturday morning, maybe they're even hungover, right? And when they're hungover, tired, they should be able to open up my newsletter and for it to be just like so simple, easy to read, not overly designed. That's just kind of my brand. And so I want it to feel like it's coming from my desk and just simple as if a buddy is just sending you an email that's super friendly and helpful. So yeah, I think it's important that your newsletter just feels like it's authentic. So if you're someone that really is like design or you have a certain color, go for it. If you're something that's more like simple, like myself, you just kind of send it, you know, pretty low key and, you know, don't overly design it. Um, so I think it's just about picking a structure um, that works for you. Yeah. I, I love that. I, I like, I feel like I, I haven't heard it described that, or at least I haven't heard the, uh, uh, yeah, when I think of people opening my newsletter, they're hungover on a Saturday morning. Don't know if I've heard that one before. I love that. <laughs> um, you know, I and I and I agree. Like Charlie here, where I'm I'm basing this one off of her newsletter, she's she's a design creator by trade. And like, you know, I talk about this all the time with her where um I, I say like all her assets need to reflect that branding. All of her assets need to be bold, bright, and reflect the fact that that she's a designer by by trade. Um, I think when it comes to that second part of like, you know, you said like, what do you even write about in, in here? What do we even put in here? Like, that's where we got to lean. It's the same thing as don't overthink the lead magnet. Let's not overthink the content in here. Let's lean on the mediums that, that we really leverage well. So like Charlie is somebody who's quite, um, she's just good. Uh, like as, uh, on the mic, she's just like a really good interviewer. And so she leverages her podcast as one of her main mediums. And she'll take a lot of the content from her podcast and disseminate that down into what ultimately ends up in the newsletter. Um, and a lot of the call to actions, you know, end up linking back over to the podcast. And I think that can be a really powerful way. Like if you're a writer by trade and you feel like that's probably your strongest medium, you're going to approach this very differently, right? You're going to approach the, the content creation process quite differently. Um, just to, to give some of like the insights here, um, throughout and in, inside a convert kit, like, um, when you're at, like the name of the game, like we said, right message, right time, right person, we want to be making sure that we're collecting data on what people are doing. So throughout, like, if you have more of a newsletter, like Matt's, you might be linking out like in, um, some of the text, you can of course add buttons here, but in any of the places that we're doing this, when we're adding links in, right. And just to say like shivs blog.com uh when we're when we're adding links in at any place of the the game we should be adding in some level of tagging saying that okay they went to uh read the uh you know uh youtube blog article right and we need to be going ahead and making sure that we're 
collecting that data at all at all points. Um, the reason this is important, kind of like what Matt alluded to, is when we get over to the the idea of automating, right? Or even like sending out a very specific newsletter, specifically to the people that went ahead and clicked on this link that did indicate that they're interested in YouTube as a topic, or again, automation where we say, did you or did you not? go ahead and click on that link and let's follow up with you differently depending on your pathways. That's really the name of the game. To me, marketing is all about constantly having this ideal path in your head of what do I want people to do? And then asking yourself at every step of the way, did they or did they not do it? And if they did do it, this is the next pathway for them. If they did not do it, this is the next pathway for them, right? So let's go ahead and go to automations. I can show you an example of that. I can go, I can even just, and start with a brand new automation here. So we'll start off with somebody coming in through some kind of secret, you know, some kind of form that we have here. Um, say it's one of the landing pages that Matt talked about. Say somebody's coming in from the creator network. We can have multiple sources here. Um, my personal opinion, like everything that somebody does is telling you something about what they want. And so I like creating sequences very particular to the pathing that people took to get onto your list. Um, somebody coming on through the guide again, that I don't know why YouTube is so stuck in my head right now, but the guide uh, about how to like maximize your YouTube channel, that's a very specific challenge. And I can send a very specific set of welcome emails. It's very different than somebody coming in from another guide that talks about how to maximize your, your newsletter presence, right. And, and what to write about, right. That's a copywriting welcome sequence. Maybe this one's related to YouTube. So I, I really like creating it specifically, but also, you know, walk before you run. If you need to start with one and then build from there, then go for it. So we can go ahead and see here, once we go ahead and have some kind of landing page, we can simply sit, hit uh, email sequence. We can have a sequence we've already created, or we can go ahead and say, we're gonna create a brand new one. We can just create that on the fly. Same exact builder, sorry. Same exact builder that we were just talking about before. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing there. Um, that, that we were just showing off, right? So um, going ahead and collecting, selecting the right template um, and then making sure that we um, build our emails there and link out to the proper things. So in this email, say that we're sending like a couple emails. So I'm gonna do on the right-hand side here, a couple emails. And our big call to action that we're putting here is a, we really want people to go ahead and click on that link um, to uh, check out the YouTube blog article, so. This is our blog article. Clicked on blog article, right? And we'll figure out our nomenclature for, for our links. I think the, the cool thing in, in automation is again, really niching down into that idea of did they or did they not take a certain path? So did they or did they not click the blog article and really having a specific follow-up as to what the call to action is on the yes or no side. So you could see like building these type of sequences, very quick, very easy. Like the process is, is quite easy. Um, it's the, the part that you need, need to be thinking about is what is that ideal path that you want to create? And then what do you want to do down the yes and no paths, you know? Matt, do you, do you yes. have any thoughts on this as in, for, in terms of like how you implement this in, in Founder OS? Yeah, I think it's about like with these keeping it simple. Like if you're just getting started, don't get too hung up on all this stuff. I would recommend just starting with a welcome sequence, which just happens every day for the first four or five days, which there's easy ways of setting that up within the automations. Um, and then as you start to get more sophisticated, um, I like to go and have um, a right message survey um, that I use uh, when someone joins uh, my newsletter. And then as the results of that survey, I queue different convert kit automations based on the different survey requests that people go and fill out. So if you go check out my newsletter, you sign up, um, you'll see that you're gone through a survey and then what you receive in my newsletter is customized based on what you fill out there. And so, um, that's the level of customization I like to get it started with. And that leads to about a web of over 300 different pathways that people will go down depending on what's right for them. So that's kind of where I'm at, but I wouldn't get that sophisticated if people are just starting, you know, play around with it and, and gradually get that sophisticated as you kind of 
dive in more and more walk before you run yeah like yeah, the exactly. other places that i'm thinking like just the cool stuff that i, I like uh, marketing philosophies that i really believe in let me add just a fourth pillar to that right message mantra I, i'll go right message right time right person right medium and so for me like one of the cool like ways that you can leverage um automation is you know when i have say like a um a sales sequence right and i have this like three emails where the big call to action is hey let's uh get you either signing up for the webinar or let's get you purchasing the product right and i go through three different instances of uh explaining the value of what i'm trying to sell and then the the call to action i have in here that i'm trying to track is did they click on the link to buy the product right and then at the end here i say yes or no did they or did they not uh, if I go down the yes path and they did buy the product, great. We even have things in ConvertKit to like have you jump to a specific place. Um, it's called events here. So that if they bought an email one, then they skip email two and three and jump straight there. Because again, we want right message, right time. We don't want to send them those other two. But down the no path, if I think through it and I say, okay, I sent three emails over the course of like five, six days um, trying to sell, the, sell them on this product and they didn't get it. They didn't buy it. Um, did I have the wrong person? Did I have the wrong message? Did I have the wrong timing? I go through those kind of uh, check boxes as to why that must have happened. And if I feel like those are all right, then I must say, hey, maybe I had the wrong medium. Maybe this, this is a community of people that th those specific people that said no didn't buy via email. Maybe that's not their medium of choice. And we have, you know, say like integrations. You've got automation here. You can go to integrations. You can integrate, for example, like Facebook custom audiences. And so down that automated pathway, down the no path, I can say, hey, let me try changing the medium and adding them to a Facebook custom audience that'll advertise to them the product that I'm trying to sell. them. So just to like kind of open up your mind, like I know there's just so many pathways people might use this product and, and kind of take it, but just want to kind of throw some seeds out there to, to see if this is inspiring anybody and just think, have you think through the different ways you can use this. Love it. All right. Well, um, yeah, to kind of like wrap things up here and then get to the Q and a y'all. So, you know, we've dove into a bunch here. Um, I think we barely scratched the surface to be honest, but just wanted to give you guys a bit of a primer on some of the ways I'm using it. And we're seeing things and then we're going to get some Q and a here. Cause that's important to both of us uh, that we just open up the floor to questions on your mind. Um, so yeah, for those of you, um, that are looking to get going, um, or maybe looking to make the switch, I can't recommend convert kit enough. And so, I'm just pasting again the link there in the chat uh, to get going. Uh, you can get to started even with a free account um, and get going. Um, so highly recommend that, guys. Like we've kind of gone over all the benefits here, talked about how I'm using it. Folks like James Clear, Tim Ferriss, and the the likes are all on it. So um, for those of you on the fence, that was a great time to to get ripping. And for those of you that are maybe looking to leverage your newsletter and take your brand to the next level. Um, you can apply for a free founder of clarity call. And this is the kind of stuff that we go deep in in founder OS. And so um, if you're looking to go and join a community of other builders um, that are all scaring, scaling their audience, their brand, their communities, leveraging platforms like ConvertKit, um, building products, building their audience, and then, you know, again, using their newsletter as a conduit to build out their own sort of media empire. Um, I highly, highly recommend um, checking out uh, Founder OS. Um, it's an absolute game changer. It's uh, my life's work. Um, and I know you guys um, will get a ton out of it. So um, we got some spots open there. And if you're interested in applying, would love to see you inside the community. Um, so we are going to go and open up things uh, to some Q&A. So uh, Shiv, I'm going to go and ask you some questions if you're cool with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do it. I, I was just seeing one in the the chat there that I really yeah, like. Go for it. Um, just the question of like, hey, text based versus um, more designed email. I know we touched on it a little bit, but like, I, I like that question because um, I think it just plays into the, again the the idea of like marketing is the science of like throwing something under a wall and seeing what sticks. And so like, I, I would try both. I have um, this. Uh, it's this sports. Um, uh, it's like a local football creator um, that that writes about the Chicago Bears here um, that, that I was helping them with their newsletter. And more visuals is important. More visuals is important for their industry. Text-based emails wouldn't come across well there. Um, I've also equally been in like industries where I have spoken to 
um, a founder audience, right. And like found that they really enjoyed to have like very text-based emails and that it was too loud when I had lots of branding, lots of colors there. So, uh, it's all about sending a couple of emails, each one, see which one gets more open rates, more click-through rates. Love that. And, uh, people had questions on like the CRM side. And I think there's some cool aspects there on how to, you know, actually not just publish a newsletter through ConvertKit, but also have that live live and even rank for SEO. Can you give a bit of background maybe on how that all works, Shiv? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like we're talking about like publishing your your newsletter posts uh, very publicly. We got this thing called the creator profile inside a ConvertKit. Um, it's not only going to be the best place for you to have this kind of public feed of your newsletter, um, and it's kind of a landing page in itself that allows you to go ahead and collect email addresses. Um, but it's also going to be the page that is attached to your creator network experience. So when people are perusing through the marketplace to try to find people that they want to recommend, the number one way, the easiest way that they're going to really understand who you are is the information it gives immediately when you click on somebody. It's going to be their name, uh, their, their publication's name, their bio really quick, like two sentences. So they're, the button that's really the call to action there go to your creator profile. And that's going to have this kind of very public feed of the newsletter posts. You can obviously select the ones that you want on there. Um, and, and that's just a really good place to both send as a landing page to outwarding subscribers, as well as ways for, for people to partner with you. Amazing. And in terms of, you know, any sort of common blockers you see people get when initially kind of getting started and any sort of advice you'd have for them to kind of overcome those. Yeah, it's a good question. I think the number one thing I see from people is they just say, hey, Shiv, like this all sounds great, but between the landing pages, the creator network, um, and then starting to send those emails, where do I start? Like what is step number one? I think people get bogged down by like doing everything at once. Um, I think step number one to me is simply go ahead and just like get that first uh, email just created. Like start I, to me, actually creating the content is the hard part, right? Like getting my mindset on the schedule of like every Tuesday, I'm going to send this email because consistency matters in these type of things. Consistency matters when you're talking about promising to get an email to somebody's inbox every Wednesday, every Tuesday, right? So whether you're choosing once a month, once a, once a week, every day, um, pick a cadence, stick to it, start creating. And then if you like feel like, um, to me, the second step would be create a network. If you feel like you will find more success in your, um, if you have like an, an owned audience, or not an owned audience, but if you have an, an, an amassed audience in another platform and you're trying to convert them into newsletter subscribers, perhaps you should start with that landing page then and start to create freebies and try to pull them into email. Um, but to me, I'm just seeing so many people have immediate success, whether they're beginners or advanced by just jumping to the creator network. We have, I was just saying this in the chat, we've got these happy hour sessions we host at ConvertKit where you can meet other creators. We run them every week. Um, you can find people to partner with. So uh, definitely join us there and, and you'll find people to partner with to, to grow your audience. Awesome, y'all. Um, well, I want to be conscious of everyone's time here. This has been a, a blast. I think we've covered a lot. Um, and sharing one last time the convert kit link for you guys to all get going um you guys are awesome and appreciate everyone taking the time to yeah join um i know there's a lot of places you guys could be spending your time and appreciate you guys taking the time to join us here today you know we covered a lot um you know went through the importance of going setting up your landing page to get people signed up for your convert kit newsletter you know leveraging this platform and all the great functionality in it to scale fast and how I'm using it to scale at over 15K subs per month, getting it all set up and queued up to not only grow my newsletter, but also all my social platforms, leveraging the creator network to be able to go and grow at over 5,000 subs from 40 different creators, all recommending me, which is a great benefit of being on the platform. You know, then leveraging the CTAs in your newsletter to not only go and drive people to your product, but also be able to go and cross pollinate people to your other social channels like YouTube, X, and LinkedIn. Um, and then all of the awesome automations that they have, whether it's initial automations, like, you know, an initial welcome sequence, all the way to more sophisticated sequences, like getting testimonials to when people sign up, um, going and plugging your different courses you may have, um, running different workshops. Um, all of this stuff can all be done in a great way, super easily inside a convert kit. You know, you can see 
the amount of automations I'm using and the amount of subscribers it's impacting, uh, you know, this is only possible on a platform like ConvertKit. Other platforms like others I've seen out there, even others I got started on initially, weren't able to offer this level of sophistication, which is why I switched. Um, and then I shared with you guys the whole um, welcome script as well, which I'll share one more time in the chat so you, none of you guys missed that. And we'll make sure that this is all sent as well um, in a follow-up. And so one last giveaway for all of you guys staying till the end. I appreciate you. I wanted to give you guys um, over 80 uh, different deep work prompts that we put about 100 hours into creating. Um, these are a ton of different prompts that I use um, that you can leverage, whether you're making animated videos. Um, there's a whole prompt here you can use to help pump out videos, talking head videos. If you're looking to go and write your point of view on a given subject, uh, you can use those prompts, build your own content machine so you can pump out endless ideas for your newsletter. You can check this out. It can go and create different newsletters that are educational, emotional, deep dives, reflections, vulnerable, edutainment lists. Um, there's over 80 prompts here for you to leverage for things like cold email subject lines, uh, your email subject lines in ConvertKit, so you can get those dialed in um, in a super easy and scalable way. Um, and then even your lead magnet, you know, I know we touched on creating that for some of you that may feel a little bit, little bit daunting. So we went and made it easy with this lead magnet prompt here as well. So go check that out, share that in the chat. Um, you'll be getting all of this. Um, just want to hook you guys up. Um, Shiv, I appreciate, uh, you, uh, joining here today, man. It means a lot. I appreciate you guys for, for having me here and, um, yeah, excited for y'all to, to grow. Let's grow together. It's awesome. Yeah, let's do this. Well, um, everyone will be getting this recording afterwards. So you got all this, um, you got all the free resources here. We'll share that also after. So everyone gets it. If everyone can go sign up for ConvertKit, also go share uh, this webinar with a friend afterwards that you think it might benefit. Um, you know, we're here to spread the word and help everyone grow um, awesome, sustainable businesses around their audience. And so um, thanks so much for joining here today, y'all. Hope you have a beautiful week um, and let's win together. Much love. Thanks, Shiv.